Welcome back, and it's that time again. From O Knife and O Light, we have another sale from them. This time, the knife is the brand new O Knife Metal 2. This is a medium sized knife coming in at 6.68 inches overall with a 2.87 inch blade. So, it should be a very easy to carry EDC knife. You got a nice drop point blade, nice top swedge, thinning out that tip, making it bulky, bulky. And you have a black coating on here that held up pretty well with, through my testing. 154 CM stainless steel blade. I love 154. It's an excellent steel. Easy to strop back. Easy to sharpen. They do have a row of jimping. I would call it very mild traction because it's very, very fine cut jimping to where there's not much to grab a hold to, especially with this coating on here. But nothing that really bothers me any. You also have these two fullers on both sides that are pretty much aesthetics only. You can't you can't use them to deploy the knife at all. You have a medium height flat grind that is not super thin because it's a very short flat grind. Um, but it still should be able to perform pretty nice if it has a nice sharp edge. Let's do a little bit of testing. The knife came with a pretty good ed edge out of box and for cardboard slicing and having a good edge it should perform excellent. Um, it's not something that you usually notice you know that thicker edge unless it's just super obtuse but this this smaller uh, blade definitely has a thicker behind the edge thickness because it's a very short height on the, the flat grind. But we'll see how it performs in uh, the rest of the stuff. But so far, it's doing well. Smaller handle hasn't bothered me yet. But here we're going to test the ergos and see how well the edge wants to bite into this piece of pine. And when I got started out, it was doing fine. Um, I was in, using light pressure into the wood. And then I slowly started gradually uh, increasing the pressure into it. And the smaller handle tapers down. And the pocket clip sits up kind of high so whenever i started getting to moderate to heavy pressure into the wood I, I was starting to get a minor hot spot from the top part of the clip and the inside uh spot where you put your screws in so now we move to the half inch twist sisaw rope and it it had some aggression to the edge and it was cutting pretty good but the way the belly comes up like that, I, you're not getting a whole lot of edge into what you're cutting before you hit the, the, cutting, the cutting board. So it wasn't the easiest to do. And you can see I'm like using that forward portion and maybe a little bit behind that tip to actually do all the cutting. And you have a smaller handle, it's just a little bit harder to hold on to. Can you do it? Yes. It's just not gonna be my number one choice to do this type of stuff. Uh, but we get through 55 cuts and for 154 cm that's you know about standard and I, that's just where I ran out of rope uh, but the edge still felt pretty good we will see when we get to the rest of the stuff but you know n not the best in the world but definitely acceptable so now um, <laughs> we're doing drag cuts like that you have a very nice precision point to do the drag cuts even though there's a little thicker behind that edge it still can get it done rather rather easily and stuff like this is fine we got to the tubing that's where it was really starting to struggle just to start the cut because and to finish it because that that tip wanted to uh, come in contact with the cutting board so i had to kind of like push the edge straight through same goes with uh, doing this cut. You can see I kind of stop short of the bottom just so I don't crash that tip into my cutting board and snap it or anything. But still have decent aggression. Um, and like I said, it performed pretty good. It didn't wow me by any means, but uh, definitely get the job done. And I think it would make a good little EDC knife. All right, now let's take a look at the deployment and the action. You have a flipper tab with some jimping there. Uh, one thing that I, I was kind of bummed out about the knife because I like the overall aesthetic of the knife But there's some things that just kind of irk me on the knife Okay, first you have a flipper tab that's canted back, which is a good thing But look how low the flipper tab is it almost sits below that um, pivot so even let's see if, if you just flip like that a little soft flip that's how much you got coming out because This is all you get before the blade has to take over with momentum um, you can still flip it with the regular light switch. It's just going to be a, a very 
soft flip. Or you can load up by pushing down, load up on that flipper tab, push down, and it comes out a little bit faster. It is riding on bearings, so it still comes out, you know, decent. It's not terrible or anything, but it definitely could have been better if that flipper tab would have been pushed up, you know, in front of this flipper tab. But the whole um, setup of the knife would have probably changed. So I, I don't know. I'm not an engineer. Definitely have a drop shut action once you release that button lock. This thing is frictionless once that uh, knife is off the button. Now let's take a look at the handle area. You have a Torx T8 for the pivot. And you have a somewhat of a decorative uh, flat pivot on this side. You have T6 for the body screws, unfortunately. Would have loved to see T8 throughout. You got some nice green canvas micarta here. Give you some nice traction and it's soft. You can actually feel the uh, canvas there. I love that. It is a flat scaled knife. So uh, when I was doing testing, it, it was decently comfortable. I will say though, when I really started bearing down, I could feel this pocket clip a good bit because that's where the, the pocket clip is sitting right here in the palm of my hand. Um, you know, it, it wasn't terrible, like I said, for just normal cutting. But whenever I really started, you know, cutting into that wood, I could start feeling that pocket clip. Call it a mild hot spot. Now, speaking of the pocket clip, you have a deep carry tip up left or right hand carry pocket clip. They did countersink those uh, clip screws. However, the clip is not countersunk into the micarta. I didn't have really any issues with it getting hung up, but that's always, you know, a concern. Do have a lanyard hole for the lanyard people there. The lockup on the knife, solid, no play up or down, left or right. You have a recess spot for that button lock, so you don't accidentally disengage it. Your centering is perfection. You have flow through construction with one sand off in the back. You definitely have a good bit of internal milling on the stainless steel liners. That brings the weight down to 2.54 ounces. So nice and lightweight. Uh, the balance point is about right there. Quick size comparison with the Ontario Wrap Model 2 and the Civivi Elementum. Next we have the QSP Penguin and the O Knife Roboto 2. And lastly, we have the Kaiser Mini Gemini and the Anafs Lander. All right, now for my nitpicks and complaints, uh, I wish they would have given us a bigger sharpening tool because I sharpened this up after, and you can see I'm hitting the plunge line. Um, something that, let's see, yeah, something that I could fix myself. It's not going to mess up anything if I, if I extend it myself. Flipper tab, like I said, it, it's so far back, you just don't get that strong of a flip. So it's got decent flipping action, not great. I wish it would have used T8 hardware throughout. And uh, like I said, I got a minor hot spot from the pocket clip whenever I was really bearing down. Other than that, uh, I was a little underwhelmed with the performance of the blade because it, it's rather thick behind the edge because of that short uh, grind height. It's almost, it's, it's like 28 to 30 thousandths behind the edge which just doesn't slice all that great and especially if you don't have a super super uh keen edge on it so overall i like the aesthetics um, it's an easy one to carry it's smooth it, it, but i you know it's not one that i think i could recommend because it's just got too many things that are deal breakers for me now let's check out some of the other items. We got a new pry tool, the O-Knife O-Pry 2, as you can see. So you have a titanium pry bar, pry in on this side. You have a cap lifter, nice pocket clip. You have a inch ruler on this side. And on this corner right here, you have centimeter ruler. You have a four millimeter to 13 millimeter hex wrench sizes up here in the middle. Probably something I'll never use, but it's there. One thing I do like about this is it just like uh, the little driver that I bought from the last time they did a sale. They have this little uh, window right here that has a little compartment. I just took them out to make it easier. It has uh, three different bits. You have a Torx T8, Torx T6. You have a Phillips and a flathead. And you have a hex number two and a hex 1.5 bit. If I'm going to have something like a pry bar, I found that I like uh, I like the ones that have uh, multi-purpose to them rather than just a pry bar. So you have the bit holder on this side this whenever you do turn it, it you definitely want to you know use this just in a pinch because you're going to feel this whenever you're turning it you do have a lanyard hole here 
I will have links down in the description to everything you see in this video. If you want to help support the channel, use my links if you're already planning on buying them. If not, it's cool. We have a new Octical. Um, it says Pink G10 with the sprinkles on it to go with the donut theme. That's going crazy right now. Looks like a lion head up here in the front. Um, you have a flat head, maybe a, like a scraper pry in, a hex. Looks like a quarter inch hex there and a cap lifter here. And then you have the S, I think it's the SK5 uh, blades. Now, my biggest complaint was with the last one like this is you have to use these blades with the holes in them. They do sell them, but, you know, it's just a bummer that you can't use other, you know, your, your own blades. My daughter's going to love this. Um, I, I got her several of the uh, donut themed knives and she's gonna absolutely love this whenever she sees it so the next light that we have is the olight center uh pretty cool and pretty bright smaller little light this is the i1r2 pro just a little keychain or backpack light it's a twist on so your first uh the first is like a moonlight mode that you get to five lumens so great for using on your nightstand or something by your bed so you don't wake up everybody in the room twist it more you get to your high which is pretty darn bright for such a uh, small flashlight it's 180 lumens uh super cool and then you have your usb-c charging port right there with your o-ring so uh you don't get any moisture in there love having the little charging port built in so i have to pull out a battery and a charging cable Next, we have the O-Pen Glow, another item that my daughter's going to steal right after this video, or my granddaughter. You have a bolt-action pin here. It's weighted fairly well. If you hold this down for two seconds, you can lock out this light that it has right here. If you hold it down for one second, it'll turn the light on, and then click it, it'll turn it off. You can also turn the light on, and then do the bolt action on the pin and click the top and you got a light at the pin spot so if you need to assign something in the dark and you got that as well you can also you also have a green laser pointer by uh pushing this forward pushing the this bolt action forward and as you can see you have a green laser pointer that i have some fun with my dog with press it again down and it'll go off comes with uh extra ink i'm guessing this is blue ink uh, charging base with a magnetic little thing on the bottom charging cable so it's pretty cool it just goes in here let's see like that with the charging cable into a charging block and you're charging this bad boy up so on high this thing is at 120 lumens medium is at 60 lumens and low is at 20 lumens with a moonlight of five lumens so yeah some pretty cool stuff um, like I said especially for the ladies or kids daughters you know I, I think my daughter and my grandkid are going to both want that immediately i do like the thicker titanium pry bar if you needed to really get down on something it should be good and i like having the multi-purpose with the uh bits stored in there and these lights are always excellent uh this one looks cool and they're super bright for their size i, I have these on pretty much every backpack and pouch i have almost and of course we have the metal too love to hear y'all thoughts about the metal um and do you plan on picking up any of this if so uh, what do you plan on picking up if you have any questions comments concerns please leave them down below i hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day i will see y'all on the next one peace